Hello, Remnant. Welcome back. And we're going to talk about the end of the world. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of... Hey, Remnant. So glad that you're here. I'm here with Chris. He is one of our students at Remnant. Super excited to have you on, man. Uh, but just a couple of things. We have a prize for you that you can win. You can win this. Oh, I got it. <laughs> This is very precious right now. Like, comment, post this video to your story, and one of you lucky guys or ladies will receive a toilet paper signed by all your lovely remnant leaders delivered to your door. It'll be great. So, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so, we're going to be talking about the end of the world, Chris. So, just why why now, Chris? Like, what, what do you want to talk about in terms of you and, like, what you want to really encourage us with today? Well... I've just been like looking through TikTok, like scrolling all this stuff, and surprising enough, I've seen a lot of Christians coming out, which is great, but most of them is about the end of the world. And I was like, okay, they're when, like freaking out, or yeah, they're like, we we should be prepared, we should do all this stuff, we have to be good to Jesus. I'm like, what is the end of the world really about? Nice, because right? I have no idea really. And then nice. Like in through it, I find Luke, Luke 21st, and it says, Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there'll be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences. Literally what we've, what we've been through this entire year, within like three months. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. There's like locusts in Africa. There's like the earthquake in Utah, which by the way, like like the Mormon trumpet got knocked down. You can throw that in here, Jamin. Anyways. But like, so what does that mean? Like for you, like as a Christian, like you're a senior, you're going to be graduating, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, how does that make you feel right now? Honestly, the feeling is a little frightening because like it's supposed to be the best moment literally for, for my life. I'm supposed to have time with my friends, all this stuff. I have prom, which is canceled. Yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, man. Great. But it's like. Looking on the bright side of these things, I just get to spend time with my family more, which I can't because high school is really rough. And then I have more time with God. And that seems the best thing I could possibly get. It's just time. So you mentioned too, like when we were talking a little bit earlier, you were talking about the fear. Like yes. it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty nerve wracking. Yeah. So how do you deal with that fear? Like, what do you do? Like, what do you do to help with that? Honestly, all I do is just sit back, look of what I am dealing with, and just pray to God. Just let him take control. That relieves basically all my stress because I know he's going to be able to work because he's God. Right. And like I can't really do anything unless God gives me the tools to do something, and mm. I'll do it. Absolutely. So, you know, the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of peace and of love and sound mind. And I think that a lot of times we have a hard time letting go. <laughs> yeah. We're just like, you just got to chill. You got to let go. Um, what else, you know, has God really been showing you that you would want to tell uh, everybody a remnant? Uh, looking through tech talk again with all these different uh, preachers and different people coming out to Christ, people that perceive as Christians or talk as if they're Christian. I've also come across Matthew 24, which also says, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. So looking at that, I also have to think some people could be lying Ooh. just for propaganda or just for themselves, boost their self-esteem or something. So we, we also have to be cautious about what we listen to or what we believe in. So how do you tell when it's right or not? You know what I'm saying? Like, Because it's all yeah. these false messengers like running around. So like, how do you tell whether it's right or not? I you I usually just go straight into the Bible, make sure if they're speaking of a verse, make sure it's actually the right verse, you know, and then do some studying on my own, like on research and like if it's actually true or not. And that has like different sources and all of that. And then I'll tell if they're actually telling the truth. Yeah. So totally super cool. I think a lot of us are really I, for me personally, like it's kind of nerve wracking you know, where a lot of the things that are happening, but we believe in a God that is 
the God of comfort. He's the God of peace. And that peace is, is having peace, not in the absence of craziness, but it's having peace in the middle of craziness. And I think that God can do that. I mean, he's done it for you. Like he can, he's done it for me and he can do it for you too. And if you're really having a hard time with just peace, uh, then we'll just take a quick moment and we're going to pray and God will give you that peace. Um, Chris, do you want to lead us in a prayer really quick for that? I can do it. Sweet man. Let's do it. All right. We pray you, Lord, to bless this day and that you can relieve the stress that we all have and relieve the pain that the world is suffering and that you can bring healing and comfort like you know that you can do. And then this world will finally be peaceful again. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome, guys. Don't remember, like, subscribe, click the bell, post if you want to win that toilet paper, and uh, one lucky winner will get that toilet paper roll signed by all the Remnant leaders. With that, God bless you guys. Jesus loves you. Catch you later. See you later.